The Indians come home hot, winning three of four from the White Sox to sneak within a half game of first in the AL Central. They left Progressive Field hot as well, scoring 28 runs on 36 hits in their last two games against the Cincinnati Reds. The Orioles roll into Cleveland on a cold spell, having lost four straight and scoring just nine runs in the process. Trevor Bauer hopes those trends continue. Next on Sports Time Ohio. They say that the Memorial Day weekend is the unofficial start to summer, and they're right, because it's blazing hot in downtown Cleveland as the Indians welcome in the Baltimore Orioles for this three-game weekend series. Jason Kipnis brings a career 300 batting average into the series against the Baltimore Orioles. And for the O's, a struggling offense looking to make some changes, so Adam Jones goes into the leadoff spot for the first time this year. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Great to be back at home where the Indians bring a record of 25 and 20 into tonight's ball game. And they'll send Trevor Bauer to the hill against this Orioles lineup, a lineup that struck out a lot. And hopefully Trevor Bauer can take advantage of that. Well, you get Trevor home and hopefully he can get back on track. He struggled in his career against the Baltimore Orioles, but you may see a few more breaking balls to them this time because they have struggled to hit that in their last series. But Bauer's been awfully tough against right handers in the month of May. They got to get him back on track start feeding off the other starters where they pitch very well in the Chicago series. He will be matched up against Mike Wright the right hander and you can see versus right handed there's in May. He's very good as well. So the two right handers will be tough against the other right handers we would think. That's our quick and loans rocket arms for tonight. Now Rick strikeouts are part of the game. They are not looked on as disfavorably as they were when you played. But I mean Baltimore they struck out with some eye popping numbers in their last series against Houston. Well when you're the Baltimore Orioles you know they are a lethal offense when they can hit the ball and they put it in play they have a ton of power when they don't do it they can swing and miss a lot and you will strike out a lot. We see that with our own power hitters here in Cleveland with Mike Napoli and things like that but 52 strikeouts into three game series is a, is a new record and boy when you don't hit the baseball and put it in play you can look like a poor team so hopefully they can continue to swing and miss if you're the Indians. Well it looked like they weren't swinging a lot of strikes too. So maybe that's something Trevor Bauer can take advantage of. Well the Indians come in as I mentioned at 25 and 20 and one of the reasons they've had success so far this year they've played well in the Central Division. When we come back Andre Knott has more on that story as the Indians get ready to take on the O's tonight here in Cleveland. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm Lo
Indians prepare for tonight's game. They're going up against an Eastern Division foe. Tribe has played 21 games in the Central Division already this year. That's more than the White Sox, more than the Royals, more than the Tigers. And it's put them in a pretty good position. But what does that mean for the answers? We turn to our Andre Knott. Well, the answer means this team has put themselves in a great position going forward. They're not looking back and gloating about the 14 and 7 record versus the AL Central. They're enjoying it. They were 32 and 43 last year versus the AL Central. And I was told by a couple players, one of the things that they had, they emphasized early on, play better versus the AL Central. Don't let uh, losing in the Central be the problem that we have come September. So they've overcome that. Now they look at this home stretch and they think it's just as important as a road trip they just took. They know with the teams that are on the schedule over the next nine days, they must stay consistent at the plate and on the mound and especially they even talked a little bit about what's going on with Kansas City. They know they've lost two of their better players. It's time to take advantage of everything that's going on within the AL Central for the Indians to contend. This yeah. Season. Yeah. Well Andre you win in your division it makes it a whole lot easier to, to win your division and not, not only that playing well in your division they got wanted to get off to a better start in April in the month of May and they have done just that. Yeah the White Sox limp into play tonight having lost three in a row. While the Indians are on a three game win streak. And of course, they'll go up against a Baltimore Orioles club that is reeling right now. Buck Showalter's troops have lost four in a row as they stand currently two games back of Boston in the American League's Eastern Division. But the Orioles have played well in the Central. They've played the most games of any team in the East against the Central. In fact, Baltimore's played more games against the Central Division. Than they have against their own division yeah. so far, and they've gone 11 and 5. So that's something to keep in mind uh, because this is an Orioles club that they can swing and miss a lot. They can probably go through their cold spells, but they can get hot at a moment's yeah, notice. Yeah, they sure can. They have the middle part of that lineup when you look at Machado, Davis, Trumbo, they have lethal power. But right now, you know, power can get you back into ball games, it can separate you from a team. But you have to hit with runners in scoring position. And a lot of times when you see teams struggling, they're not hitting with runners in scoring position or hitting with runners in scoring position two outs. And right now the Indians are doing that. Yeah, and they did it against a team that really had hung its hat on pitching to this point in the season, the Chicago White Sox. So that should give them a little jolt of confidence, I would think. Uh, I certainly agree with you. They're, they have a little swagger going on, and it all started. When we came back for that homestand against Cincinnati played them two here two down there and went out on the road and they should be feeling pretty good about themselves. Well let's take a look at our keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture and one of the keys keep them in the yard contain the O's power Trumbo has 14 homers Machado has hit 13 Chris Davis has belted 10 and it's a lineup that really won through nine they've got power up and down that lineup in Baltimore and get to the bird starters uh, I think. Look, as we have said, bullpens are built better nowadays, but if you can get the starter out of there before they get to the back end, guys, you've got a really good chance of victory. Yeah, they're, they're uh, relievers. They rank second in the American League, and they're very good bullpen. So you want to get their starters and get them early. Well, Trevor Bauer and the Indians take the field. Bauer will be working to Chris Jimenez, who will be behind the plate tonight. And the Orioles starting lineup for Buck Showalter tonight looks like this. Adam Jones moves into the leadoff spot for the first time this year. He has batted in the leadoff spot 29 games throughout his career. Hunsu Kim, he's off to a really good start this year. Manny Machado bats third, then it's Chris Davis, Mark Trumbo, Nolan Rimel, Jonathan Scope, Ryan Flaherty, and Caleb Joseph. Our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher for the tribe is Trevor Bauer making his sixth start of the year his 12th appearance. He's coming off a start against Boston you know he pitched five innings gave up eight hits he didn't pitch as bad as his numbers look he gave up a few hits that I think he was frustrated with he's going to have to move on from that start he left trailing in that game four to nothing he's 0 two in his career against the Orioles he's pitched 11 and a third innings give up 11 hits and eight eight runs so hopefully he's going to do much better in his home start here. Uh, let's check out the defense behind power tonight it is brought to you by Jeep. It looks like this Ramirez is in left field Davis in center Chisholm Hall in right Uribe at third Lindor at short Kipnis is at second Napoli at first Jimenez behind the plate. Lance Barksdale has the plate tonight Jim Wolf is at first Adrian Johnson second and the crew chief Gary Cedarstrom is down at third. Boy, nice to be at home and nice to have some 
beautiful warm weather. It is a hot one too. That's okay. Love it hot. I mean, and the scoreboard's saying 72 degrees. I don't know if I'm buying that or not. No. About 85, I think, when we got into downtown late this afternoon. Ask Andre; he'll know. It's sweaty. <laughs> so Adam Jones stands in, and Trevor Bauer ready to get the home stand started for Cleveland. And a swing and a miss at the first pitch. First time this year, Adam Jones in the leadoff spot. You can see he's up and he wants to get aggressive early. He's been struggling this year, just a 223 batting average. Nice curveball. That's a pitch that we may see Bauer use a little more tonight. The Orioles really struggled with that breaking ball down in Houston when they swung and missed 52 times. Now the 1-1 one, one. and a ground ball hit it up the middle and it's through on the 2 1 pitch. So Jones is aboard to start the game for Baltimore. And that snaps an 0 for 10 slump for Adam Jones. Well you get the count in your favor and you can get a little more discipline. He got a fastball with what he was looking for was a ground ball but found a hole. Trevor Bauer been much better with runners not on base this year. 209 average with runners on it's a 290 so he's going to be out of the stretch right from the first hitter. Hyun Soo Kim the first Korean born player in Orioles history. And he's off to a fantastic start. He has 16 hits in 36 at bats. And that hit him. And he is in pain. They got him right on that left ankle. Or maybe it was the knee. I don't know. He He's in a lot of pain I can tell you that much. Well let's see if it uh, it's the breaking ball and right on the toe right on the instep of the left oh, foot on okay. his back foot that's the back foot breaking ball right there. And he didn't get out of the way and he's paying for it now. He's taking a slow walk. That's just like following a ball off your foot. You just gotta, you know, let that pain get out of there. He's limping pretty well, but they're just gonna give him a, a you know a little time. He didn't move at all. And a lot of times. Ouch. That's a direct hit. Yeah. Doesn't feel good. He's got that pad on and everything, but it didn't help. So Baltimore is gonna start this game out with runners on first and second. Well, Baltimore has set the table for the meat of the order now. Manny Machado, Chris Davis, Mark Trumbo. But these three guys, and you look at it, as they go, the Orioles go. When Machado, Davis, and Trumbo get big hits when they drive in runs. And the Orioles win. And there's yep. a smash there up the go. middle. And Machado gives Baltimore a 1 0 lead. Three batters into the game. Uh, Machado, the American League Player of the Month for April, and he's their best hitter. Without a doubt, having a great year. So they draw first blood. They've been hitting 133 with runners in scoring position the last four games, but. They uh, they got it late in the morning last night. They're coming out swinging tonight. Jones scores and Machado gets his 29th RBI of the season. Well, Manny Machado was seven for his last 45 coming into today's game. He was hitting 360 back on May the 12th, but 
He had gone through a pretty good slump before that big hit right there. So Baltimore has the lead. Still nobody out. Now Chris Davis. And that's inside. Ball one. Yeah, and then he got after that first pitch, and the opposition on the first pitch from Trevor Bauer, they were nine for, or excuse me, seven for 13, and now eight for 14. Side two balls and a strike. Well, he's realizing now these guys might be looking away on him because everything to Davis has been inside trying to crowd him and not give him some very much swinging room. This is not a bad idea. There's a bullseye to even the count. Well, for Baltimore, you look at Chris Davis. And in their 26 wins, he's batted 298. In their 19 losses, he's hit a, a buck 39 with two of his homers, five runs batted in. You know, a guy that when he gets hot can carry a ball club. You know, he's one of the few guys around that can do that. But boy, when, when he's swinging and missing, he can look terrible at times. Third base coach Bobby Dickerson. The ball fouled back out of play. And a 3 2 count for Chris Davis here. And a critical spot already early in the game now for Trevor Bauer. Indians down 1 0. Three batters in, and Davis with a 3 2 count. And Mark Trumbull waiting on deck. Misses high with a fastball and the bases are loaded. Well, the first four reach and uh, right now Trevor Bauer in a little hot water. And now you've got Mark Trumbo who leads the Orioles with those 14 homers. And he also leads the club with 32 runs batted in. I was informed by our friend Ashby that the Orioles landed at four o'clock last night coming in from Houston after that series. So they're nice and relaxed. They didn't have a whole lot of time for sleeping. Now Trumbo's 14 home runs tied for the league lead with Todd Frazier. And he takes a strike to the outside corner. Player profile brought to you by Levin Furniture, originally an 18th round pick of the Angels, ended up in Seattle, came to Baltimore in what looks like a real steal. That's fouled on the right side. Nice pick by the ball boy. Very well done. Oh, Connor Kanker, of course. Well, you know, you look at this situation, trouble for two in bases loaded situations. So you got to hope that maybe he's putting a little too much pressure on himself right here. Well, I think as a team, when you know you're going through a little tough time, everybody tries to do it. But this is, Bowery needs his first out, period. Breaking ball, and he got a piece of it. You know, when when this guy, Mark Trumbull, came up with the Angels, he he's got as much power as anybody. You know, from the right side of the plate, always a, a good power hit. He had some issues where had some knee problems and some injuries. But boy, off to a great start this year.
Got him to swing at a ball in the dirt. That thing bounced a good two feet in front of the plate. And that is the first out of the inning. Boy, you're right. To, to see it out there and, and you see a batter swing at it is, is sometimes shocking. And you wonder what he's looking for, but with two strikes, he was just protecting. It's our circle K strikeout. It's a curveball, and that's the pitch they were having problems with. But boy, that one wasn't even close, and he got Trumbo to go swing. Boy, as a hitter, you walk back and you're thinking, what, what was I thinking? Looked good coming out of his hand. <laughs> it looked like he was bowling by the, where that ball landed. You could see the spot where it hit out in front of the plate. Now Nolan Rymel, and he takes a fastball for a strike. Watch this. You're going to see the mark right there. That that is three to four feet out in front of home plate. The only guy I see get a base hit on that pitch was Vladimir Guerrero. <laughs> and I think he did it in Baltimore when he was with the Angels. Fouled out of play. And the count 0 and 2. Bowers try to navigate his way through a dicey situation here right out of the gate a run in. Yeah, but minimize the damage is what he has to do now. He's one pitch away from getting out of the inning if he can get a ground ball double play. Breaking ball struck him out. Back to back K's. And they're still loaded with two down now for Jonathan Scope. See, that's what we talk about when you talk about making outs or productive outs when you get situations. This is a curveball he comes back with. I had a feeling we'd see a few more of these tonight and makes a great pitch and he gets back to back strikeouts and a chance to get out of this inning with just allowing the one run, which would be a tremendous job. And we'll bring up Jonathan Scope, who can be a tough out. He's gone eight for 25 on the. Orioles current road trip one of the few guys that's actually been swinging the bat well How about that a little change up first pitch again I think he's taking advantage of the hitters aggressiveness yeah, to Jonathan scope why not you can see I mean you don't expect to see a change up because you're changing off you're changing up off of what he hasn't seen a fastball yet yeah that fastball outside he pulled that one a little bit. And the count evens in one and one. The one one. Right back up the middle. Diving attempt by Kipnis can't get it. And the Orioles score two and make it a three run first inning wow. on the two out bases loaded hit by Jonathan Scope who is now four for seven on the year with the bases loaded. Yeah that's a backbreaker for Trevor Bauer had a chance to get out of the inning with just allowing the one and then he hung a breaking ball. That ball was upstairs it just didn't get to where he wanted it, it goes right back up the middle so Scope hits the mistake and drives in the pair and Baltimore has a big three run first. And up comes Ryan Flaherty. And he swings and misses. Flared in 23 career games against the Indians has put up good numbers but he is one for his last 10 overall and hitting just a buck 89. Well Flaherty's in there playing third base because Machado is now the shortstop because J.J. Hardy is on the disabled list. So Machado the, the came up as a shortstop the great third baseman too. He moved to short and now Flaherty gets some playing time over there at third base. 
McFlurry's always done well against the Indians. Good block by Jimenez. And the count is two and two. Yeah, Chris gets his uh, workout in when Bowers on the mound. A lot of balls that are out there out in front of home plate. There's already been four. Three hits, a walk, and a hit batter, plus two strikeouts in this first inning. Flaherty keeps the inning alive as Bauer will make his 30th pitch of the opening frame. Buck Showalter has the Orioles currently sitting in second place in the AL East. Well, runners will get a head start now on the full count. Overall, Baltimore one game better than Cleveland this year in terms of record. They're 26 and 19, while Cleveland is 25 and 20. Davis at second, Scope at first. They'll be off. On a 3 2 pitch to Ryan Flaherty. Well, this will be an eight pitch at bat for the light hitting Ryan Flaherty, so he's got to feel pretty good about. His well, first any, trip to the plate any tonight. Time the bottom part of that lineup can make a, a starting pitcher work as hard as Bauer is having to work right now. That'll work out in the long run. To center field, and on a line drive, Rajay Davis makes the catch. But Baltimore strikes for three, and now the Indians are coming to bat. Out for them already, and the starting lineup for Terry Francona is presented by Progressive. Carlos Santana will lead it off. Jason Kipnis, then Francisco Lindor, Mike Napoli, Jose Ramirez, and Juan Uribe, Lonnie Chisinau, Chris Jimenez, and Rajay Davis. And tonight's Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher is going to be Mike Wright. He's six foot six, 215 pounds, 26 years old. First time he has ever pitched against the Indians on the year two and three and the ERA just under five. Baltimore four and three in his seven starts to this point and he has pitched at least five and all seven starts. And Carlos Santana takes. Oh, first pitch strike. Oh, 
Up and in, 2 0, or 1 and 1, excuse me. Santana was 7 for 30 on the road trip. But in addition to the seven hits, he also had seven walks while driving in a half dozen. And even though the Indians won six out of nine on the road trip, they have to feel pretty good about coming back home because as a team, their batting average is 51 points higher at yeah. home than it is on the road this year. Yeah, well, there's a long way to go in this one. Be nice if they can respond early after that first inning. Down and in. And it's two and two. That's low and away. Up. Full count. Fastball change up to this point. We'll see how they fare every time you go through that line. I mean, it's all the pitches you can see that first at bat certainly helps. And Tana pops one to center. And Adam Jones will make the catch one away. Our stat of the game is brought to you by Buick. And if you look at the Indians, what they've done at home as opposed to on the road, that's the best differential road to home in all of baseball. Now, you expect the Rockies to be up there with what they've done historically at home as opposed to on the road, and even the Texas Rangers. But kind of surprising to see the Indians yeah. at the top of that list. No doubt. Hopefully they can use that home cooking to their advantage now. It's a little slider. Fastball down and in. Two balls and a strike. Jason Kipnis has hit in four straight. Only five for his last 17. Two and two with one out here in the first. Swung at a curveball down and in. Two down. Let's check the uh, Orioles defense for you tonight. In the outfield from left to right, it'll be Kim Jones and Reimholt. And on the infield, third to first, Flaherty, Machado, Scope, and Davis. Joseph is behind the plate. Francisco Lindor. Back out of play. Lindor had a good April. He's had an even better May. Well, a few days left to go in this month. Over his last 13 games, he's batted 375. Oh, he's getting hotter as the weather warms up. Oh. 
Ooh. Yeah, I said he went around and that'll end the inning. Couple of strikeouts for Mike Wright as the Indians go one, two, three. And after one, it's Baltimore three, Cleveland nothing. With MLB.com at Bad App. Stay connected all season with radio broadcast, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at Bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Trevor Bauer works here in the second inning down three to nothing Caleb Joseph the number nine hitter leading it off. Joseph is O for his last 13. The third base, Juan Uribe makes a perfect throw across, one down. Our great clip of the game from Wednesday afternoon in Chi Town. Corey Kluber with another sterling performance. That coming off a great outing at Fenway Park in Boston. Yeah, he was uh, very solid. Well, Adam Jones got this game started with a base hit. And he's aggressively going up there, hacking again. Fouls it back. Jones has never done much in the leadoff spot to make you go, oh, wow, that's that's a smart move to put it back in the leadoff position. But I'm sure Buck Showalter is just trying to do something to shake it up. Trying to get him some more pitches, better pitches. Maybe he'll think about being more aggressive, and uh, you know what? He's two for two. Yeah, it's so so night. far so good. His career numbers as a leadoff hitter in 29 games, he batted 240, no homers, two RBIs, 21 strikeouts in those 29 games. But here tonight, well, that's a good swing, taking that fastball in the inner part of the plate and taking it the other way, not over swinging, not trying to pull it. And his other uh, base hit right back up the middle on a 2-1 fastball. Andre, he was three for his last 26 coming in. Anything more to it? He's been dealing with an abdominal injury that came out of spring training that they had. I think they put him at the top of the line to see more fastballs and almost to relax him because he's been kind of compensating because of that abdominal injury that he was trying to come back from. 
Well, he's a guy that, you know, he's, I don't know if he's the unquestioned leader, but he's. He's a gamer. He's the guy in that clubhouse. He's a gamer and has been. What a deal they got from Seattle when they traded for him. Eric Bedard. Inside corner, a strike to Hyunsoo Kim. He was hit on the big toe by a pitch his first time up, and that just set up the inning. He's in the hole 0 2, but he is tough to strike out. Yeah, he's maybe. The one guy in that lineup that if you strike him out you earned it. He has struck out three times in 36 at bats. He's a guy that you know that's where he came from Korea. They put the ball in play. They don't want to swing and miss. He went down and golfed at the center. And got pretty good wood on it, but back is Davis, and he'll yeah, make he'll the tag. Kick. And Jones will hold it first. Two well, down. That's a play there where if you're Adam Jones, you go back halfway, and if you think he's going back on the ball, you go back to tag, and you you, you start when you see the throws online. You can always hesitate. See, he'll he'll read the center fielder Rajai Davis, so he says, okay, if he's going to go back, I'm going to go tag up, and I'll go. But then he sees the throws online, so he'll just stop and go back. Trying to get himself in scoring position. And with two down, Manny Machado to the plate, drove in a run with a single his first time up. Well, hop smash off the glove of a rebate, and Jones going to hit second, and he'll go for third. And here comes the throw by no, 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 Ramirez, no. and it's too late. And in the scoring position is Machado now. That you just don't want to let another guy get himself in a scoring position. Keep him at first base. Keep him out of. I mean, they're, they're, that's the seventh guy that swung at the first pitch. It goes off the glove. So you figure, okay, he, he deadens the ball. If it was hit hard enough, he wouldn't have went to third. But Ramirez trying to throw him out makes the mistake because the runner moves up and gets himself in the scoring position. You lose the the force out at second base and you got a dead pull hitter up there now. And with two down Chris Davis. Digs in. Three shift to the right side for Cleveland. These guys are getting very aggressive. Not that Machado needs much help with two outs, but the runner at second base with that shift on, he can get off a ton. Well, Bauer's given up five hits, and the two guys on, Jones and Machado, have two apiece. It's been all singles. Right now, that's a, a good thing. And Davis, a big swing, and he came up empty. Well, he tied him up, and he hasn't given him uh, a lot to swing at. He walked him in his first at bat, and everything seems to be inside to Davis. You can see it's everything in, 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 in or off the plate. And the one two pitch, curveball got him looking. So Bauer gets out of trouble here in the second as the Orioles strand two in scoring position. But Baltimore leads it three to nothing.
bottom of the second inning, four, five, and six, two up for Cleveland. Mike Napoli in the month of May has driven in 19 runs in 21 games. Even Mike's got the uh, neon appointed batting gloves there. It's all about the accents, Rick. The accent strikes. Well, yeah. That, <laughs> it, that's the colors now with shoes and everything yeah. nowadays. You're right, the accents. Saw Danny Salazar out there before a game the other day with the bright soccer neon shoes. colored soccer yeah, shoes. Yeah, right. <laughs> you can't miss them. Well, you look in the in the stands now and look at all the vendors. With the lime green tops. You know, they started it. They're trendsetters. Know, whatever. They certainly are. Check that out. Those, You're not going to miss them. You want a hot ushers. dog, you go see him. Those ushers know a thing or two about fashion, let me tell yeah, you. They do. It's Dollar Dog Night. And that one's got the cold brews. Tonight, he's working hard. <laughs> They're ice cold beer. 3 2. Is that Andre? <laughs> There's a ground ball. <laughs> Knocks the shortstop Machado down. That and he throws him out. He's a player, boy. Originally a shortstop, but did a tremendous job at third base, and then went to Buck Show Walter and says, "Hey, with Hardy out, I want. I'm your shortstop. I want to go out there. And you have no choice. And look at the play. Makes it look easy. And he's a big, tall guy too. But what an athlete he is. And he's one of those. You talk about young superstars in the game today. Manny Machado is certainly one of them." You remember early in his career, he had knee surgery and, and injuries early. Yeah. To miss a, a year, but boy, he's uh, he's something special. Jose Ramirez with one out, bases empty. One on one to count. Taking his time after that. I don't know if something happened after that pitch. Really strolled in to get the baseball and took his time to get back on the mound. And missing outside with a heater. Three and one. Left handers have hit him well this year. 368 clip, but. Now there's a smash in the left center field. That'll get down, and that will go to the wall. Ramirez stops at second base with a one-out double, his tenth two-bagger of the year. I like that approach for Ramirez. Put a nice swing on it. Had to count in his favor. Fastball away. Stay on it. Plug the gap in left center. Ramirez hits his tenth double now. Gets himself in scoring position. Now the Indians with an opportunity to get on the board. Andre, what do you have on Mike Wright? Ty Van Berkeley, the hitting coach for the Indians, said the one thing that stands out to him is the two-seamer and four-seamer. He can get one up to about 97, and he can sit at 91, 92 with the other. And the thing he'll do against right-handed batters, he'll show it on that outside corner of the plate. And if you'd like it, he'll go a little bit further out. But he thinks uh, Juan Arebe is a good matchup against Wright tonight. Now let's see Rebe looks it's a little bit outside ball one. One swing of the bat. Pretty good clip here of late. And he smashes one on left field that'll get down and that'll go to the wall. 
Indians get on the board as Ramirez comes home to score. The throw to second, Uribe slides, just beats the tag. It's an RBI double. And the Indians trail it now three to one. On the seventh double of the year for Juan Uribe, give him 10 runs batted in now. Well, he's starting to heat it up. He's starting to swing it. He gets a hanging breaking ball on the inside part of the plate. And with that big swing, turned on it into the corner. Gets to the wall in a hurry. And Kim gets it in, makes a nice throw, made it really close. With that ball hitting the wall, he gets that foot in just in front of the tag. So the Indians on the board, three to one. Uribe his 10th ribby. That's Juan's 10th hit in his last 29 at bats. And four of those 10 hits for doubles. Now Lonnie Chisenhall, and he swings at the first pitch, and it's a foul off to the left. Lonnie with a hit in three consecutive games. Straightened up by a fastball. Upstairs, two and one. He got the big hit on Wednesday to get to break the Indians on top with a two out base hit on a breaking ball off Quintana. And there's a line drive caught by the shortstop, but a rebate back. To second base ahead of the throw by Machado. Scope. Well, Machado under, was waiting for Scope to get there. Look at him laughing. He said, Where you been? He was waiting for him to get there. Because he wandered off and, and they had a double play if Scope moved. He did not move. There. That step right there, and then he hesitated to see if he was going to catch it. He's looking for him all the way. He couldn't throw it because Scope never got there. Well, Scope was way off. Yeah, but he wasn't playing him to pull. I mean, when that ball sit, you almost react. He, to me, he didn't react to it. That's a good break for the Indians because the inning's still going. Chris Jimenez takes a look at the ball up and in. Chris has hit in five of the seven games that he has started for the Indians. Outside two and zero. Oh. Alumni weekend going on here at Progressive Field. We've got Ellis Burks coming up. He'll join us in the third inning. We'll also visit with John McDonald later tonight. Now the two zero -oh pitch coming to Jimenez. Hold it foul. Boy, he was on it. Well, 2 0 count. He knows the count's in his favor. He knows I'm going to sit on my pitch and get after him. That's what you learn as, as, as a hitter, and you go on. You can get discipline, and you can sh shrink the plate in half, and you can get after a pitch with 2 0, 3 1 counts when you get the, the, the count in your favor. You can eliminate some doubt. 2 1 pitch hit the center field. Back goes Jones, gliding back and makes the catch. The Indians get on the board, though, on back to back doubles by Jose Ramirez and Juan Arebe. And it's Baltimore 3, Cleveland 1 after two innings.
The Orioles come to bat here in the third inning. They lead it three to one. And we're joined now in the booth by former Indian Ellis Burks alumni weekend. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks you, for having me you here, look, guys. You look fit. You still working out? I still do it. Yeah. Yeah. Still working Have out. To. Still living in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. Playing golf a little bit more now. That's a hobby, right? Exactly. I love it. Good for you. Don't oh, yeah. we all? Oh, That's something we can relaxing. still stay competitive at. Exactly. Don't have to run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way you hit him, you didn't have to run a lot. Jeez. Now, do you uh, do you still stay involved in the game of baseball? Are you still? Yeah. Yeah. I just got back from Boston last night. I'm with the Rockies. I'm, I'm a special assistant to the GM, and I also uh, the assistant hitting coach. But I'm only on the road. I do all road games. Okay. So it's, a, it's an awesome game. All right. It. Well, they yeah. said you, you should be the hitting coach when they're home because they can put up some numbers oh there. My God. Yeah, yeah. That's but a good offense. We've, isn't we've it? been struggling a little bit at home, but uh, I think they they got the remedy. You know, got it taken care of. Seeing I single for Mark Trumbo to lead off this third inning for Baltimore. But you know, as you guys know, it's all about pitching. You know, once we get that pitching taken care of, I think we'll be all right. Especially with the offense that we have now, um, all of our pitching depth right now is in our Double A and Triple A levels. Yeah, unbelievable. Right. Where do you see some of these kids? Burba's down there as a Double A pitching coach, he right? Is. Dave Burba, and, yeah, and right? He sees it firsthand. Uh huh. Mark Wiley oh, sort of oversees the whole pitching uh, yes. area He's in that organization. Tell us a little bit about Trevor's story. I mean, he came out in April, and you know, yeah. just he was he was the story of baseball. He was, uh, you know, phenomenal kid, great upbringing. I mean, he's from Texas, obviously, so you know, I'm from Texas. You know, great guys from Texas. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> all the big things come from Texas. We know that. But you know, he's one of those guys. He's a work workaholic. His work ethic is unbelievable. He's hanging around with Nolan Arenado, who's that's a know, cool. That's a good guy to emulate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, the thing about him. He works hard every day to get better and better. And the only thing uh, we talked the other day is uh, try not to pull as much because you know you're a young kid. You hit, you have some early success. Lindor looks like he's going to be able to turn two as he goes to Kipnis and yeah. turns it easily here in the third inning. Yeah, you, you know you have the early success with the home runs. All of a sudden you think you become a home run hitter and you start leaking open a little bit. And that's what he did. Uh, you know he has 66 67 strikeouts already. Yeah. And I told him that's a bit much for you. I mean let's go back to what you were doing in spring training which was spraying the ball all over the field and he stayed on a lot of pitches. But, but don't a lot of young kids no matter who you are that's what they tend to do that yeah. you know you hit a few home runs and staying in the big part of the field is yeah. what you learn to do. Yeah. But if you can catch it early I think you can you know stop him from getting in, in that bad habit yeah. for too long. That's the one thing I, I notice about hitters in every organization. Boy, do they work, and that's a, the, the hitting. It's every day, and it's yeah. how many swings they take a day, and it's uh, you know it's nonstop. It's just that repetitive thing, man. Each day you're going to get better. Just continue to do it each day, and I think uh, everything will fall into place. I love the ballpark. I love the the new fixtures and how they've you know done it. There's a ball blooped toward right field. Kipnis is going out. Can't get to it. I love those hits there too. Those are the things that get you going. Heck yeah. Jonathan Scope now two for two on the evening. Ellis, one thing we're seeing nowadays, I'm curious to get your opinion on this, is with the addition of, of the shifts, I mean, shifts every hitter, you know, three guys on one side of the infield, three guys on left side of the infield. You never yeah. know what, what's going to happen. Are we going to see. Maybe the younger generation of hitters who are just maybe getting into baseball now or just starting their professional career, are we going to see hitters more field savvy? In other words, if they're going, are they going to be better uh, equipped to take the ball the other way to beat the ship instead of trying to pull it and beat it that way? Well, you know, I'm not a, a big fan of the ship. I mean, simply because you're pretty much giving in to your weaknesses. I mean, you're basically, if you're a pull hitter, I mean, you're trying not to do that, and obviously, you know, it's going to change something in your swing. It gets in your head, first of all, and then you're trying to do something you're not normally doing. It's a great strategy for defense. You know, they're, they're definitely taking advantage of it, but for me, I think as hitters, you know, today's hitters, uh, a lot of them are trying to pull a little too much. And it's, I think it's hurting them. The sky high pop, a rebate is going to make the grab. That went too quick. We got to talk a little more. We're going to stick around to. with Ellis Burks here. Indians come back to bat here in the bottom of the third, down three to one.
take your selfie. <laughs> and They're about as high as you can go up there, huh? Don't forget, later in the game, we'll have Miller time. It's brought to you by Miller Light. 3 1 Baltimore, bottom of the third. Matt and Rick here in the booth, joined by Ellis Burks, who, of course, played for the Indians. Came here in 2001 and uh, played uh, 01, 02, 03. So you kind of saw, you saw a major transition years uh, in the Indians. You came in when, yes. when Charlie Manuel was here. Mm -hmm. And got into the playoffs in 01. And then you saw things kind of go sideways in 02. And then the Eric Wedge era dawn yes. the year after that. Yes. So you saw kind of a major change in, in the Indians' uh, fortunes in a lot of ways. I was here in the rebuilding stages. And, um, you know, of course, every team goes through it sooner or later. You, you can't have that success that the Indians had over, what, 10 or 12 year period, you know, forever. And then you have to rebuild. But, uh, yeah, that was part of it, and you know, it, it was a blast being here. I know one of the guys you, you took under your wing when he was just a kid was CC Sabathia. Oh yeah, he's <laughs> had obviously a lot of ups and downs, but we literally saw him grow up. Yes, here in Cleveland. CC, you know, his mom and dad uh, told me to take care of him. Yeah, you know, and uh, I did. I, I took him under my wing, went, bought him suits, and you know, just took care of, him, tried to teach him the right way how to, you know, carry himself on and off the field. And uh, I think I did a great job. And, and you know, CC will tell you that I, I told him a lot of things that, uh, you know, would help him in the game. Yeah, CC still playing. Although, I mean, he's there's only so many pitches in a certain arm, but he, his last outing, he pitched a whale of a game. Yeah, he, he's turning it around. I mean, he's, he's uh, feeling good now. And, and uh, I think everything is going to just fall into place for him once again. Yeah, he's, he's a good man. I want to get back to something we were talking about right before the inning came to the end and that is hitters today in particular young hitters you know I was trying to get your thoughts on will hitters change their their sort of thought process instead of trying to pull to beat the shift will they will we see hitters try to use more of the whole field in the future that ball smoke but foul well in order to be successful you'd have to I mean I mean there's a lot of acreage over there on the opposite yeah. field. You know, if you could do that, even if you, you know, a lot of times kids forget they can bunt. Beat the shift, drop that bunt down. I mean, it, it happens. Interesting here, the Orioles, that, you know, with Santana at the plate, they don't have the exotic shift on for him. They, they may be the only team that does not shift when Santana's hitting. And I've seen him go the opposite field. I mean, right. he can do it. Boy, I, I wish he, he would do it more. I yeah. mean, if he could tell himself when he takes that left center field stroke that, oh, that, that drives it that way, it's really a pretty swing to see. Yes. You know, the other thing, Ellis, I remember when you first came to the Indians, Charlie Manuel, we may have had more extra hitting sessions than any team in the history of baseball. Yeah. Yes. I mean, early BP was every day when Charlie was yeah, there. There was two or three guys every day hitting. And you know who one of them was? Jim oh, Tomey. Jimmy! Jim Jimmy! Told me every he was day. there all the time, and I'm like, Jimmy's hitting 350. He's still out there every day. <laughs> but Jimmy, yeah. it worked for him, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He was the cause of about three or four sh uh, shoulder surgeries and elbow <laughs> surgeries for the coaches. Oh yeah. <laughs> but look where he is today, Hall oh, of Fame. Yeah, he will be. Yeah, he will. <clears throat> 600 home runs. Over that 600 home run mark. Unbelievable. Now a one one pitch downstairs two and one. You know I watch you guys all the time up here in the booth. You don't age a bit. Look at you. <laughs> I'm sitting up here looking at you. The plastic surgery does the for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I was going to say the same you know thing what? about you. There's yeah. no stress here. Exactly. Hey, you know there what? it is. Oh it, that oh. ball ate up the first baseman Davis. That was a smash by Kipnis and he's got a base hit. Nice. Yeah, that, you know that old saying that it gets a lot easier the farther you get away from the lines. That's so true because yes. we sometimes people forget how hard it is to play that game. And there's a bullet right there that, you know, Davis tried to stay in front of, couldn't handle it. So Kipnis smoked that one, gets a base hit. You know, it's just that these guys are so good that they make everything look so easy. That's and, true. And, and that's the thing of it. No matter what sport you watch at this level, um, boy, uh, professionally, the. The athletes are phenomenal. You know, speaking of phenomenal athletes, this kid right here, Lindor, I love his hands at shortstop. He's a he's a hitter. I mean, he's going to be an unbelievable player. And you know what makes him the the, the best of all is his attitude and his personality. He's right. at, at his age, he's what 22 years old, 21, yeah, 22 years old. He's 
something very special. Well, he's he's you don't lot, teach. He's had a lot thrown at him already. Yeah. Like I mean, you, you said, Rick, teach. How many 22 year olds have bat third? Yeah. And, and can handle it. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it looks like a natural. I'll, I'll tell you, there, there's been times this year that I, I've been surprised by him because a lot of times when Napoli can't, has not been hitting a baseball behind him, they're pitching him tougher. Mm -hmm. and he's taking his little singles the other way. He's not trying to get greedy and hit doubles or triples right. or hit home runs, but that average is staying up there and he's doing everything he has to do. And that's what we were talking about earlier. A guy can make that adjustment and go the other way. Yeah, this kid is, he's going to be special for a long time around here, wherever he plays. Yes. How much, Ellis, when you think back to your playing career, how much were you influenced by the hitters around you in a particular lineup? A lot. I mean, when I came up with Boston, I mean, we had some phenomenal hitters. Jim Rice, Dwight Evans, you know, yeah. Wade Boggs. I mean, these guys, I learned how to hit watching them. Wade Boggs was the kind of guy, if you're pitching him in, of course, he's going to pull it. But if you pitch him away, he's going to go that way with yeah. the ball. And that taught me, okay, there's a lot of hits over there in that opposite yeah. field. Yeah, yeah, Wade Boggs was like a, like a Rod Carew. Yeah. I mean, he, that's why his he, his goal was 200 hits a season. Yep. Jim Rice, he could hit for power and average, and he could do whatever he wanted. I mean, those are two different hitters, but two tremendous hitters. Exactly. In their own right. And I learned a lot from each one of those guys, and it was so good to see him this past this past week uh, we we're in Boston and they had the reunion for the 86 team. Yeah. I had no idea that that was going to be there at the time that we were going to be in town and of course they retired Wade Boggs's number. Yeah. Unbelievable they, days man. They have a special nice. team. Yeah, you They've guys went in right after offense. we did. You yeah. went in right after yeah. we were. Yeah. Exactly. You had some pretty good hitting lineups in Colorado too didn't you? Oof. <laughs> man. <laughs> Yes, we did. One two pitch to Lindor. He's there trying go. to go the other way. Will it get down? Kim oh. runs it down in the gap to end the inning. Hey, great catching up with you. Hey, good enjoy team, your man, weekend. Always. Thank you. Ellis Alex. Burks here. Thanks. Thanks. Alumni Goodbye, weekend. Three one Baltimore after three. Aggressive field, 3 1 Baltimore. We're going to the fourth inning. Caleb Joseph will lead it off, then top of the order for the Birds. As Trevor Bauer gave up three in the first, but since then he's held them at bay. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning, joined out by John McDonald. How are we doing today? We didn't know if you're going to make it in here. You got well, tied up a little bit? No, we just kept on talking baseball, <laughs> you know, just like you guys are doing right here, <laughs> having fun. How's things? Things are great. Now, you're traveling around during the summer? I was I was down in Columbus the last couple of days uh, watching uh, the Clippers and picked up a game last night down in 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 Dayton watch Lake County play down there. It's been fun watching our guys play. They're playing hard. Uh, a lot of a lot of teams in our organization just playing very good fundamental baseball and winning baseball games. 
That's what it's all about. I see their their records have been very good up and down. So it's good development. I mean, I think winning is good development too. Fly ball to center field. Rajay Davis is there to make the catch. Now, Mac, when you're in the minor leagues, when you're around, are you working with specific infielders, outfielders? What are you doing? I think we have specific out infielders that we want to work with, but we work with everybody. We're just trying to make, I think, our philosophy on the infield side is to take each player individually and find ways that are going to help make them be the best player that they can be. You know, we're not trying to teach everybody the same way. We're just, we're working, hey, what, what, how can we help player X get better today? You yeah. worked with him last year. I remember you talking about it. It was a lot of fun working with Frankie. He's, he's come a long way, man. He's, he's, he's into his own right now. He's, uh, I don't think we could imagine he'd be swinging the bat this consistently. I think we knew there was a really good bat in there. We didn't know how consistent it was going to be. You never know for sure, do you? I mean, you can, you think you might know, but until a guy gets up here and faces the big league pitching and the, the ups and downs and the everyday, you never know what's inside a kid, man, until he gets a chance to play. Right, and you saw, you saw a very good, uh, very good infielder, good shortstop. You know, you, you didn't know arm strength. Is he going to have enough arm strength? But his footwork was so good that you're thinking it doesn't matter. Arm strength doesn't matter all that much. If if you're able to get two balls and your feet work really good, you're going to get the ball out. That's you're going to get key, outs at first it? base. Yeah. Not worried about arm strength. Can you get outs? We want guys that can get outs and and. And Frankie's learning. He knows if he goes in the hole, he has to be quick. He's not gonna. It's easier to throw a good one hop, throw to first base, than it is to try to fire it and get it there That's in the air. That's what I've really loved about him. You know what? He comes up and makes it look like he's been doing it his whole career, going into the hole instead of trying to jump up and throw it like Jeter used to do. He stops, plants, and one hops it like you're an outfielder. But he practices it. Yeah, and I that's think that's nice. The, that's the key to it all. And he knows his own abilities. He knows his strengths. He knows his limitations. He knows about ball security, right? You want to catch every ball, have a good grip before you throw it. Juan Arebe, who's been fielding him a long time, throws out Adam Jones two away. You know who I've been impressed with? Both Jose Ramirez and Michael Martinez, guys who have been sort of forced into that, hey, we need you to learn some outfield, need you to learn a bunch of different positions. And they've been sort of thrown into the fire. And both, I know Martinez isn't playing tonight, but he made a play the other day. Was it, his brick was it in Chicago? Yeah, uh, he, yeah, play? caught the oh play, yeah, goodness. double play line drive, and he threw him out at home. Yeah. There he is. He's <laughs> one of my favorite players in the organization. Michael, I'll tell you what, you want somebody to get, to get better at the minor league level, you put Michael Martinez on that team, and you say, hey, keep up with Michael Martinez. He's going to yeah. take ground balls today. Yeah. Happened last year with, with Frankie, happening this year with Eric Gonzalez. Hey, we want to take ground balls, Eric. Michael, will you come out and help? And Michael's going to be the better shortstop on the field. He's going to work harder. He just he has that. He, he's a major league infielder that really knows how to work, works his feet every day, throws hard every day, wants to throw the bases. He does so many things that are good. Just just he's by, a baseball player. Yeah, just by our players being around him, Bingo. they get better. Boy, that's something. He's a baseball player. That's yeah. what you love to see. And we want him. I mean, I, I love the fact that he's here in the big leagues, and I, and I want him to spend the rest of the year here. If, if he's not in the big leagues with this club, selfishly, you want him around our younger players, which is it's just been so important for their development. And I think everyone down there knows that. Jason Kitten scoops it up. A quick one, two, three, third for Bauer. We'll continue with Johnny Mack as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Indians trailing it three to one.
Top bottom of the fourth coming up. Before we get to that, our injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. More bad news for Kansas City. The defending world champs, first they lose Alex Gordon to a fractured wrist when he ran into Mike Moustakis. And in that same collision, it's learned that Moustakis now has a torn right ACL. Yeah, that's a tough break for them. They've had a lot of injuries this year. Mike Napoli will lead it off here in the bottom of the fourth for Cleveland. My favorite players, my favorite teammates. I was only a teammate with him for a couple of months, one of my favorite teammates. Who's that? Mike Napoli. Mike Napoli. Okay, I got you. Yeah, everybody feels that way around here. He, he, there's something he brings to the table. It's a tone setter. He's ready to win. He knows, he knows what he's here for every day. It's not necessarily for his numbers. Yeah. So he's happy nice. to win. He's happy to win. Well, I could tell by by the tone in your voice last night that you enjoy working with the young kids, don't you? Uh, it's on a, a daily basis. It's a lot of fun. Just trying to help them and maybe not make the mistakes I made when I was coming up. And how to, you see their mindset, you see their struggles, and how do you how do you talk them away from their struggles and get them to know it's it's a process. You know, it's day to day. It's focuses uh, on the things that you can control and not worry about your numbers. Or, you know, we're not, we're not, we are judging you, but we're not judging. We, we're here to help you. We're here to help you get better. Is we're it, a resource. Is, yeah, right. Is it tougher, I mean, to get through to some of the, the, the Latin kids where they don't understand, you know, the culture when they come over? I, I think you could say it that way, but no, it's a fun, it's a fun challenge because you get how hard that they work and, and what we're focusing on is, is trying to get them better defense. I'm not trying to teach them English class, right? I think, I think that, is harder for them. Right. With, I'm teaching right, them baseball, right. and and you know myself and Travis Ryan and Robbie Thompson, we can show them too. We can. You're not just telling them the words. You're showing them footwork, and gotcha. and you're you're you can talk about situations. And uh oh. Napoli drives one a deep left field. It is gone. Souvenir City. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, a little more gusto. <laughs> Mike Napoli with his ninth home run of the year, and it pulls the Indians to within a run. Did you guys have this worked out for me or what? He's been waiting for years to do that. <laughs> All right. That's beautiful. Make it a one run game. The Napster gets his ninth. Got another hanging breaking ball. Look at He knew it. Right knew it as soon as he threw it. And Napoli hit it halfway up the bleachers. Wow. One it, run ball game. Is it a hanging breaking ball if it gets popped up? Yes, it's a hanging break ball if it gets popped up too. You just missed it. <laughs> Mac never did. <laughs> yeah, hit him. You know, we were talking about working with uh, with younger players, and it, it, it kind of got me thinking that you have to have a certain skill set. Obviously, just to get into professional baseball, you've got to be better than most. Probably you've got to be better than 98% of the world just to get into professional baseball. Then to make it to the big leagues, we're talking about a whole different stratosphere. But when you're working with young professional players, you can't you can't probably teach in cookie cutter terms, can you? Because each player has a different individual skill set. You were talking about Lindor. Maybe he doesn't have the greatest arm strength. So you can't teach him the way you would maybe teach a Derek Jeter when he was a young player, can you? Well, you work with you work with their skill, and you say, okay, how can we make that skill better? So we say, you know, we would talk to Frankie and say, well, hey, you need to work more on balls in the hole. You need to, you know, play a little bit more long toss. Work. At, he started playing catch uh, all the way across the infield last year in Columbus. He'd, he'd have his catch partner stand at first base, and he would instead of playing catch out in the outfield, he would play catch all the way out through shortstop and all the way out uh -huh. uh, halfway out on the outfield grass. So every throw that he made was throwing to first base and stretching his arm out and feeling. You see, you know, from you, the position that he's going to throw it from anyway. So if you're practicing that every day, right, even that much more, right. And you get a ground ball and you get turned around. Do you really need to look to see where first base no, is? No, you know it, man. You the, know. Yeah, you can close your eyes. So when you go to bounce that ball over from there, you're throwing it into an area. When you go, when you turn and you see it, and you try to throw it as hard as you can, and you're trying to hit a little dot over there is kind of what it feels like. But when you just turn and fire it into an area that yeah. you know is there, you let your first baseman work for you. You know it's a team game, and when you understand that, you don't worry about doing everything yourself. Well, that's what you try to do as an outfielder. Give your infielders when we're throwing it to the base a good hop so they can handle it. One hop that make it right there. I totally understand. It makes sense. And you don't have to throw it all away. So we're worried about some of the guys are worried about being perfect. We don't want we don't want you to worry about being perfect. We want you to practice being perfect. And then when the game comes, let your ability take over. Reaction just yes. 
I mean, that's preparation, preparation yep. and opportunity to make yes, good baseball players, and you got to be ready to take advantage of it, which I think a lot of our kids in our organization are, are understanding that, and, and that's what we're working for. It's a daily process of trying to figure out ways to get each player better, get each player to buy into that. One ball, one strike count for Juan Uribe. And he pops it back out of play. The other thing, too, Mac, is you look at the composition of the current Indians team. You got Lindor, who doesn't even have a full season under his belt in the big leagues. You've got Jason Kipnis, who's got obviously a number of years, but you know he's still not a 10-year major league veteran. But then you've got a, a Napoli, you've got an, a, an Aribe. So you've got this mix of veterans who've been there and have world championship brass, got the guys in between, then you've got the new kids who are learning literally on the job as, as days go by. Is that broken back bounce to the third, the second for one? A double play two away is that is that a good mix on teams that you've been a part of is that a mix that can be successful that's always the mix that I feel like breeds more success especially when you're going through the season I think at different parts of the year you add and subtract pieces to give you the right mix I think you learn that over the course of a year or two years of what players fit that mix going going forward sometimes it happens in the middle of the year sometimes there's a piece that gets added in September that that makes a big difference but for a long season having a mix of players that I mean that want to win Uribe wants to win every day he wants to compete Mike Napoli wants to compete every day he wants to be in the lineup wants to do things to help the team win that stuff trickles over to other younger players and they want to be a part of that they know that they've won they want to win too so if they can learn and and kind of glean things from them you see it in their play you see it in the way guys play they you know they, they want to follow guys like that to to so they can show them how to have success I don't know if you caught that I did did you hear in his answer did you hear what he said September editions 2013 Boston Red Sox <laughs> John yeah. McDonald gets added they win the world championship I don't think it's coincidence yeah <laughs> well I'll tell you I, I know one thing you ask year. you ask any manager and they they want certain veterans because it makes their job that much easier where you know Gian be here one year where you know he could do a lot of things around here to people and help the manager out along the way too and it's not just players right it's, it's the it's the right players it's sometimes it's the right exactly. attitude um, the right work ethic the the personality how they're how they're gonna fit <laughs> Flaherty just blew his pants out there. well it's not you know it's not dirt that's a little uh, wow. rubberized track he's gonna need some serious patchwork we're just don't worry up. Willie will get it done whole new pair of <laughs> duds probably good luck Willie Willie get it done pal <laughs> Willie Jenks is sitting in there going right now no I got a, I got a new pair in the back yeah, that's right. <laughs> what size was that <laughs> what's the length now the one two and Lonnie follows it back and hey, not that you want you want to have to make additions every year but you know in September their rosters get expanded we want those additions obviously to come from within rather right. than to go out and get somebody so I think the mindset that you want to have down in Columbus down in Akron is they're preparing to be a part of the big league club at some point and the players need to understand that it's not just about them going up and and having their own personal success but what can they do to help the team win loop toward left this might drop no it's run down nice by play. Flaherty and he keeps his pants with him. So the Indians get another run closer on the Mike Napoli home run. Thanks for stopping by, Mac. I'm going to go head out to Souvenir City, see if I can get that ball. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Here we go. Retrieve it, will you? Uh oh. Napoli drives one to deep left field. It is gone. Souvenir City. <laughs>
is brought to you by Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. Three, two, Baltimore. And we go to the fifth inning. And Manny Machado drills one deep right center field, and it is off the wall. And Davis can't come up with the ricochet. Machado's going to go oh, for three. Here's the throw. He is. He is. He is out. It took a while. Machado overslid the bag, but Arribe couldn't get to him with the tag. And so the crew chief, Gary Sederstrom, didn't make a call because there was no call to be made yet. And before Machado could get back to the bag, Arribe finally got the leather on him. Well, leading off that inning, Machado probably should have held it because all the momentum is coming for uh, Rajai Davis here. He had a nice, easy throw. It's a little offline, but by the time Arribe can get the ball and bring it back, his slide, he was a little over the base, trying to dive in there and get the hand in, and he gets him. So he would have been better off staying maybe at second base and not making that first out at third. But a nice play for the Indians, Davis. To right field, back goes Lonnie Chisholm, and he makes the grab on the warning track. Two down. Another look. Watch this. He goes by the bag, and yeah. Arebe couldn't get the tag on him, so he just stayed patient. <laughs> it looks like two kids playing there in their <laughs> in their living room, wrestling. But he got him before he could get the hand to the base. It was close. Just that when you when you slide outside that bag, he just couldn't hold on to it. If he if he went straight into it, mm -hmm. he, but he couldn't avoid the tag. It looked like Machado was in really good shape until he got about two steps around second, and then it looked like, uh oh. Yeah. He started to feel it. Well, he, he already made the commitment to right. go. And, and with the momentum from Davis going to the base, it was a little different. If he was going away from it, I might have agreed. A little bit outside with the fastball. There he is right here. He said all right I'm going and I think he know he, at that point he knew he made a mistake. He was going to really have to hustle to get in there. But boy he is three for three today and he didn't miss a home run by much. He would have been able to jog around it only missed by a couple of feet. Trumbo draws a walk and a two out base runner for Baltimore. So Tom Boschenek says the Indians have 11 outfield assists. Rajay Davis owns four of them. That one I wonder if he was surprised to see Machado going. He, he didn't rush the play at all. No but it made it so much easier for him coming in. Because that ball, think about where it hit. it hit. It hit the screen in the bullpen, and then it really kicked back. But as a base runner, you make your own decisions. You couldn't. You couldn't wait on a coach to tell you to come or stay put. He had a really tough first inning. Fastball strike. Line to left, and that's a base hit. So now Nolan Rimald keeps the inning alive for Baltimore with two down. Well, the guy that did the damage in the first inning is coming to play. There 
Bonner was. Jonathan Scope, a two-run single back in the first inning. Baltimore would score three. Juan Uribe got the Indians on the board with a double in the second. And then Mike Napoli's solo shot on the fourth closed the gap to a single run. You know, the interesting thing here tonight, Rick, is that Baltimore has nine hits. And other than the leadoff double by Manny right. Machado, in which he was thrown out going to third, they've all been singles. Right. Now, uh, you know, I don't know if in that Houston series where they struck out so much, Matt, they come back with a little different approach, but they're they're getting base hits the other way. They're taking the ball where it's pitched. And to me, those aren't strikeout swings, you know? Well, it's, let me ask you, does it look like a team that's kind of said, let's get back to basics? Well, that, and it's probably a team that got in at 4 in the morning and they're a little tired, and they're not over swinging, to be honest with you. <laughs> Forgot about that part of it, yeah. Yeah. You know these guys they're put they're not trying to do too much. Let's put it that way. It looks like they're staying within themselves not trying to hit it out of the ballpark. I mean they have a, a good ballpark to hit in in Baltimore. You know as we talk about the, the American League East some of the towns there they get the great parks to hit in. And, and you know they, they've won 17 games at home this year. They're 9 and 11 on the road and it's because you know they don't score as much. But then they're, they're pretty even. They're, I mean, home road split. Hopped him up. This might be playable. Napoli into foul territory, squeezes it, and the inning is over. So Trevor Bauer keeps throwing up zeros and dodging bullets. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth, 3 2 O's. Rajay Davis and Carlos Santana for the tribe here in the bottom of the fifth. They trail it by a run. Mike Wright gave up a run in the second on the RBI double by Juan Arebe and then the solo homer by Mike Napoli in the fourth. the knees it's quickly 0 and 2 Mike Wright grew up in Whiteville North Carolina he and Tommy Green who pitched for the Phillies back in the 90s both came out of Whiteville North Carolina Missed inside right twice was named the Jim Palmer Award winner as the Orioles minor league pitcher of the year. Mm -hmm. 
breaking ball low and away. He went from 0 2 to 3 2, had a chance to put him away and missed. And the payoff pitch up and in, he walked him. That. Ball four, and the Indians have their leadoff man aboard. The only other time the leadoff man has reached is when Napoli hit the home run on the fourth. Let's go down to Andre, who has news on the Indians' injury front. Well, Michael Bradley is back to resuming swinging a bat so far. He's done some light swinging, and it looks like as we go along through this weekend, he'll be able to do a little bit more, possibly hitting the cage by the end of the week. They want that shot that he took into that shoulder about a week and a half ago. They really want it to take place so they don't have to go through these problems the rest of the season. After this pitch, I'll tell you about Carlos Carrasco, which could be some very good news. He's going to pitch tomorrow night in Akron. He's going to throw up to 60 pitches, four innings, somewhere around there. Uh, and if everything goes well, there's a good chance you could see him in the rotation before this team gets done with this home stand. That'd be with the Kansas City series, then, if you like, count out five days. Yes, it looks like it. Terry said he doesn't have to get up to 100 pitches, and the way his arm feels and the way he's been going. Good. If he can continue running and doing all this stuff around the bases, we'll see him here, possibly against Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. I guess their main concern would be him covering the bases yeah. and how he hurt them, you know, hurt his leg to begin with. Well, Tito said he's going to have to prove that he can make that play. Right. It's just going to happen during a game. Absolutely. Well, you have to be ready to go and do anything, uh -huh. and I'm sure they will run him through the test. So hopefully that that's a great, great news. We'll get him back and into the rotation. You kidding me? <laughs> I'll catch you with that arm uh, in the rotation. RJ Davis taking a call strike and now right gets ahead of him. One and two. Well, the Indians had two hits off right the first time through the lineup. They have three the second time, this being the ninth man. But he just walked his first guy, and he walked him after he had an 0 2 count. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing you got to keep your eye on if you're Buck Showalter. He's pitched at least five innings in every start so far this year. His longest outing was two starts ago, the 14th of May. It was against the Tigers in Baltimore. He went seven innings, gave up three hits and a couple of runs. Slowly chopped to oh, third. Flaherty's got to hurry. Bare hand grabbing, throwing. Rajay beat it. Yes, he did. It was a good play by Flaherty, but I knew that was going to be trouble with Davis running. He did everything in his power to get the ball, made a good throw, and it looked like a tie. They're going to say, I don't know if they're going to challenge it, but it certainly looked like Davis beat it out from our angle. Yeah, he did. Had that foot on the base, so that'll go as an infield single. No, good start to the fifth. And it will bring up Carlos Santana with two on and nobody out. Santana 0 for 2 tonight. He has flied out and popped up. Santana takes its down low ball one. Upstairs.
Santana now awaits the 2 0 pitch. He fouls it off. Baltimore went 5 and 1 against the Indians last year, and they won the last four games of the season series in a row. That's their longest win streak against the Indians since 1993. And you and I were talking about it before how the Indians always seem to play Baltimore tough. Yeah. And, and that speaks to that. They usually do every time we go there even though we only play them once a year they've always played them very well up until last. Baltimore also shut out the Indians in the last two games of their season series last year. They hadn't shut out Cleveland consecutively since. B.A. before Archer. 1974 was the last time. Cuellar, Nally, and they had some Palmer. guys that could do it. Yeah, yeah, they sure did. Now the 3-1 pitch, and Santana draws a walk. 23 walks for Santana in his last 27 games now. Well, the Indians are same opportunity that uh, Baltimore had in the first. Bundy is up, and they're going to get him loose. I'm sure. Here comes the pitching coach. There's Don Cheedy, the bullpen coach out there, standing next to him. But uh, yeah, that that second time through the lineup, that the walks really hurt, and I think this leadoff walk to Jimenez when he had him down 0-2 certainly hurt. And then an infield single set it up, and then he walks. Santana fell behind, so now the Indians with a great opportunity to do to put a crooked number on the board, and that's something they haven't done to this point. And 12,500 fans will receive a Corey Kluber jersey tomorrow night. Series continues against the Orioles. It'll be a 4-10 start. Just go to Indians.com for your tickets. <laughs> Remind me to come back to this in a minute. Would you look up 74? I did. Bases loaded. Nobody out. Jason Kipnis. Trying to potentially give the Indians the lead. The tying run is at third. Go ahead run at second. Kipnis singled in the third. He's always swung the bat well against these Orioles. Came in a career 300 hitter against the Birds. He has one career grand slam. Well, whatever Wallace told him out there, he jumped up atop 0 2 very quickly on Kipnis. There he go. On the appeal, no. Says the crew chief yeah. Gary Cedars tried to climb that ladder with a good fastball and he thought about it. But he was able to check his swing. But right now he needs to see an out. For the Indians, they need to see a run and keep it going. Swung out and missed. He strikes him out. One away. His fourth strikeout. And the first out of the inning. He came back after it followed that high fastball up with a good slider that was down and uh, out over the plate. He was sitting inside, but that thing went straight down on the outside part of the plate. Kipnis came up empty. So now it's up to. Uh, Francisco Lindor to get it done and he's trying to minimize the damage. Up and out of play.
Man, Lindor might have chased one that yeah, time. Yeah, well, he moved it. That was a two-seamer running away. I'll tell you what, this guy, after that second walk, his uh, pitching coach came out and had a talk with him, and he's been doing nothing but throwing strikes. Got him to fall off a high fastball, ran a two-seamer up and away. Then he got a swing and a miss, and now he got Kipnis with that good slider down and away. Let's see what he goes here. Does he go up? Tried to get him to chase. Same thing he did with Kipnis. Changed the eye level. Now the one two. And he spoils it. Went right back to that uh, two seamer at about 96. It's upstairs. That's about all you could do with that pitch if you're going to swing at it, foul it off. And hopes you try and get a better pitch to hit. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to try to bounce one here or if he's just going to stay with the, the, the fastball, whether it's a, a two or a four seamer to get the strikeout. He bounced it and yeah. Lindor laid off. It's two and two. Okay, he went up the, the first time to try and get him to change it, and, and this time he tries to get him to swing at the ball in the dirt. Didn't want to throw it for a strike. He trusted his catcher, Joseph. And he is really working hard in this fifth inning to try and get through it. 26 pitches, much like Trevor Bauer's first inning yeah. in the ballgame. Right. This has just been reversed. And now the 2 2. Lindor pops it back out of play. It started with a walk to Chris Jimenez, and Rajay Davis dribbled an infield single to third, and a walk to Santana loaded him up. Kipnis struck out. Now Lindor yeah. with a two ball, two strike count. And that's fouled out of play again. He's hanging in there. He is hanging tough. Everything, you know, he's changing that eye level, and he hasn't had much to, to hit really put in play in this at bat. But it's a 2 2 count. And he lays Good off take. down and in full count. Great take right there. That's a pitch that you can easily. This one didn't bounce. So he went with that little slider down and in. Something's got to give here. I, if I'm Lindor, you, you, I'm looking for the two seamer. He's got to come in with a strike here. You don't well, walk he doesn't have to, run. but I, I'm looking for that two seamer up and away that he, he's already thrown about three times in this at bat. He hasn't been able to get him to chase his pitch. Here's the set and the payoff. And a fly ball right field. Reimold will settle under it. You got to go. Jimenez tags. He's coming home. Here's the throw, and he is saved. Throw to third, not in time. So the Indians have tied the game as Lindor lifts the ball just deep enough to right field, and Jimenez comes home to tie it at three. Yeah, you had to send him if you're Mike Sarbaugh. You couldn't take a chance deep enough. It would have taken a perfect throw to get him, even though Chris isn't the speedster. But boy, you wait till he catches it. He stays behind it. It's offline, and both other runners are taken off. It's a one hopper. Joseph has to come out, and he tries to get the out at third base. Can't get it, and now Buck Walters going to the mound, and he's not going to let him face Napoli because Nap hurt him the last time. So the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made. Timeout here in the fifth. Indians three Orioles three Indians have runners at second and third and two out Mike Napoli coming to the plate we'll tell you who will face him when we come back.
the field are hooping and hollering as the Indians have come back to tie it at three. And they've still got runners at second and third with two down. And the new Baltimore pitcher is right hander Dylan Bundy making his 14th appearance on the year. He's walked eight and struck out nine and 17 and two thirds innings. He's kind of the uh, the guy that will eat up some innings out of that bullpen seven out of his 13 appearances have been multiple inning outings. He's got Mike Napoli stepping in Napoli launched one of the bleachers and left his last time up. This is the shortest start of the year for Mike Wright. And in his last start against the Angels the bullpen gave up a couple of inherited runners back in the sixth. And Mike Napoli picked on a breaking ball right there. And drove it out of here halfway up the bleachers that made it a three two game the uh, the Indians were able to tie it up here and a chance to go ahead with the two out base hit. And this is something that the Indians been doing since our last homestand when Cincinnati was in town hitting with two outs runners in scoring position they're up to about a 280 batting average now. They've well on the year with runners in two uh, with runners in scoring position and two outs are hitting 247. That's up to eighth best in all of baseball. Yeah. They were 21st 11 games ago. And that's when it started. That's right. 11 games. Right. That's why they, they played so well man you get key hits. And that's why you're you're up average and uh, you know. Now over Napoli, five runs a game. Napoli's been one of their best clutch hitters. Yeah since May 16th 283 team average with runners in scoring position with two outs but they've they've really been on a roll of late. Well, keep it rolling. Outside three and one. You know. They, they, these guys want to be careful they know what Napoli's about he was in Boston he's been in the East before they know the, the tendencies. They're going to pitch him carefully they do have first base open you have Ramirez on deck. But Ramirez has a pair of hits tonight. Oh, he powered him. Yeah, he came right at him. Three-one. Well, Dylan Bundy, just 23 years old, he's been a top prospect in the Orioles system. Come back from an arm injury that forced him to miss uh, all of 2013 and most of 2014. Didn't pitch all that much last year. Fouled off. The guy's come back from that Tommy John surgery and he's obviously had a few bumps in the road since then. Napoli takes aim. The 3 2 pitch. High pot on the infield. Change up. Machado, the, or rather, uh, Flaherty, the third baseman, makes the grab and that will end the inning. The Indians have come back to tie it 3 3 after five.
coverage of baseball. Jose Fernandez. Seven innings pitched. He gave up one earned run. Struck out 12 Tampa Bay Rays. He's won each of his last six starts. And he's looking at an ERA for Buck 89. Not too shabby. Brand new ball game. Sixth inning. Ryan Flaherty to the plate 0 for 2. Zach McAllister warming in the bullpen for the Indians. I think, Rick, this becomes a really big inning shutdown inning for Trevor yeah. Bauer. His team has fought back to tie it. He's done yeah. his job by putting up zeros. He just needs one more. Well, yeah, you give up three in the first, man. You've got to put zeros on the board until your team gets a chance. They can bring you right back in the game. This inning right now a must, and that's why that bullpen is up. He's facing uh, eight and nine in the lineup, and they're going back to the top of the lineup. So we'll see. He may only be on for one or two hitters here, and that's it. Even if he gets outs. Flaherty put up, uh, I think it was a ten pitch at bat his first time up. He ended right. Up lining out the center field. It was a pretty good battle. And that was at the end of a long first inning for Trevor Bauer. But he got out of it. And since then, has not allowed a run, though he has given up six hits since that first inning alone. Nine in all. Strike three call. Four strikeouts now for Trevor Barr. Goes down and in with a good fastball at the knees inside corner. That's something that Bauer didn't do in his last start in, in Boston. He didn't strike out a batter. And that's only the second time that's happened in the 69 starts. So Now Caleb Joseph 0 for 2 tonight. He's grounded out and fly to center. And a big curveball. Drops in for a strike. All right, so I did that. You said when the Indians were last to shut out consecutively by Baltimore, it was 1974, and you right. said McNally, Quayar, Palmer, right. those guys. Right. It was a doubleheader. Game one. McNally, nine innings, three hit shutout. Okay. Game two, Mike Cuellar, nine innings, five hit shutout. Wow. Two to nothing, one to nothing was the final score. How about that for a double dip? That's what they could do to you. Fritz Peterson went eight and a third in game one, but gave up two runs and lost. And then in game two, it was uh, Jim Kern. He went nine innings, gave up one run and lost. You know what? I think I was at that game. I because I was uh, played in triple A in Oklahoma City Kern was called up in September and made that start I came up to see Is that it, right and I swear to God I was at that game and I saw him That's he pitched awesome. eight innings they didn't get him a run yeah it's awesome now that you mention it wow tough breaks but as you said that was an Orioles pitching staff that was Capable of well, you know that. what? Those guys, the, the left handers, Quayar, McNally, not overpowering. Palmer had the great arm, you know, and the big curveball, and he was, you know, the Hall of Fame pitcher. McNally was really good, too, you know. Now, was Dobson on that staff, too? Uh, he was, was earlier. He, earlier. Uh, no, when, in 74, he might have been with the Yankees, I okay. think. When I'll they had in. the 420 game winners, Pat Dobson was on that staff in 70. Now the 3 2 pitch. And a foul back. I'm trying to think, man. Do you remember uh, you remember year by year the World Champions? Was 74 the Dodgers? Uh, Tom, Oakland. Tommy Bone. No, it was Oakland. Yeah, it's seven, well, look at <laughs> You know what? When we talk and he says something and you say, no, I already said that. He said, I can't hear you. Now oh, yeah, you, you can make a me. statement and he's yelling from the back. Here's a backhanded stab by Warner Rebe. He'll throw out Caleb Joseph two away. They can't hear us, all right. <laughs> nice play by Juan Rebe here. Is that ball 
Got down there in a hurry. Yeah, backhand, nothing for a third base. When he's used to that, he picked up a nice hop and make the throw across. So two up, two down here in this inning, and he's going to stay with Trevor Bauer and give him a chance to get Jones, who is two for three. That's right. The Oakland was 72, three and four. Yeah. And then 75 was the Big red machine. Uh, well, back to back. Tommy will tell you. Just ask him. <laughs> Murph, can you turn on Tommy's mic, please? <laughs> Not only that, maybe we'll uh, bring our camera around and show he colors as he's telling you who won. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Trevor Bauer at the 100 pitch mark right now. Over 60% for strikes. You know, all things considered, when you think a 32 pitch first inning, you know, he's trying to get you through six. That's a, that, that'd be a well of a job. Giving up three, throwing 32 pitches, and then if he could uh, get this last out, put up five zeros on the board. That's Not doing your job. The one two is blowing away. Look, I, I know. It's a bottom line business, professional sports. It's the way it is. But I go back to what I said before the nine hits, eight singles. It's not like they were knocking them all over the yard. But sometimes we're going to give up hits. That's what happened to him his last start in Boston. Charging hard, Lindor gets a big bounce, flips it over. And Trevor Good job. Bauer shuts him down one, two, three here in the sixth as we stay tied at three. Two different things, but I'll tell you what, they uh, they worked it out. They worked through it. Six innings after giving up three in the first. Good job. Well done. And that's what, the third or fourth time he's got Bauer? Third straight, I believe. Jose Ramirez rips it foul on the right side. Sounds right. I don't know. I know it's three, if not four. And I think he's had uh, Tomlin. It twice too. Well, remember, and you pointed out, it was bases loaded, nobody out. It's like this could go sideways in a hurry. Here. Yeah. And he gets back-to-back -back strikeouts. He almost got out of that inning with only allowing the one run. Right. Gave up the two-out single that, that knocked in a couple, but that—that's it. I'll tell you. What, yeah. Look at that. That's fine. That's see, they're talking. That's right there. Jimenez is working him through it right now. He doesn't care what's going on out there. He's trying to stay into the head of of Trevor Bauer. That's your job as a catcher, man. And you see, he, he wants him to leave this ball game feeling positive about everything he did, even though he gave up three in the first. Good work tonight. Dylan Bundy got the last out of the fifth inning. And he misses two and two. 
So Jose Ramirez, who is two for two tonight with a double, a single, and a run scored. This guy's got a pretty good changeup. That's the pitch he's been throwing a lot. And wow. there's a base hit to left field, and Jose Ramirez is three for three. Nicely done. That's a, a good swing on, on a good pitch. He earned that hit. Took just what the pitcher gave him. Watch this ball going down and away, and he stayed out. He said he had to work those legs. He had to let that ball track deep into the zone, but he just, bam, slapped it the other way, got the base hit, leadoff man aboard again, just like they had last inning and in the fourth inning as well. Now here is Juan Uribe. Double in a run in the second, rounded into a double play his last time up. Juan has a hit now in seven of his last eight games. He's batting. Well, he came in batting 277 on the year at home. And he's gone one for two tonight, so. That number is improved. And he smashes one in pretty deep right field. Rymel on the run. Makes the catch in the middle of the warning track. Boy. And back to first goes Ramirez. One loud out here in yep. the sixth. Hit it well. Not much more you could do there. Drove it to the track in right field, and it was on the line. And there's nothing Ramirez could do. If it gets over his head, he's thinking scoring it. And on the run, he makes a good catch on the warning track. So he rebates. Hit it hard again. And that will bring up Lonnie Chisholm Hall. You know, Dylan Bundy is one of those stories that, you know, I don't. I'm, it's too overly dramatic to say he's a, he's a cautionary tale, but you know he was the fourth overall pick in the 2011 draft by Baltimore. And the following season, he made his major league debut. Was it too much, too fast? Who knows? When you have Tommy John surgery, you figure it was going to happen at some point, I guess. In the following season, and he missed the whole year. He had the surgery, and then he's trying to work his way back. At one time, he was a top prospect in the Orioles organization. But, but yeah, you get drafted that high, there, there are very big expectations that are put on you. You know, and I, it was funny. I was reading something, I think, last week. And, you know, you talk about the first round. That's what makes baseball so tough, first-round picks. You know, you look at other sports. They're almost a lock a lot of times. To at least get there. You know, but there's times where... First round picks, I think, are like a 30 some percent. There's of, of even getting there. And I'm talking in the very first round. And speaking of, that draft is coming up here in the near future. Yeah, it'll be uh, another 10 days or so. Yeah. First part of June. 0 2 pitch to Lonnie up and away. Just talking about a draft. Was it the 10, 2010? We were on the road somewhere. Was it with Sale and those guys? Or? It was the Chris Sale draft. Yeah. And there were about, I think, uh, five or six players taken ahead of him. And he said, wow, those were all good players. Yeah. But then there were about four or five guys you've never heard of that didn't make it. Yeah, before him, right. So it just and goes never. to show you, you don't. You don't always know. Ramirez goes, pitches inside, and the throw is uh, right on the money. Throw. I mean, Joseph couldn't have 
ran it down there and handed it to him any better right into the slide of Ramirez and I was wondering if they were going to try and, and steal a base the, the, the pitch would have been if you could pick a change up but it was a high fastball and a very good pitch to throw on and he makes the perfect throw it slides right in and that's a nice play by Machado because he was able to get the ball secure it and he slides right into the tag. Worth a try. And now two down. And a 2 2 count on Chisholm. And he pops him up. And the pitcher Bundy is calling for it. And he makes the catch. Seriously? As he knocked Flaherty out of the way. We've seen that twice this week. Through six, we are still deadlocked at three. Lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud partner of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1 800 Elk Ohio and buy Ford, built Ford tough. Well, beautiful day, beautiful night, downtown Cleveland. Summertime appears to be upon us, and everybody turning out for a big night in Cleveland. Kicking off the homestand here with the Indians and Orioles in a good ball game. Baltimore got three in the first before the Indians had to turn it back. The tribe uh, got one in the second, one in the fourth, one in the fifth to tie it. And now we move into the seventh inning. Still deadlocked at three, and Zach McAllister takes over after Trevor Bauer went six innings in his start here tonight. All right, it'll be a, a bullpen game tonight, and and Tommy did tell me in between innings this is the fifth start that uh, Jimenez caught Trevor Bauer, fifth straight start. Yeah, it's hard to believe he's been here that long. I know, I it? know it. So good work, Paul. Young Soo Kim leading off. He's 0 for 2. Hit by a pitch and scored in the first. Chase the high fastball 0 and 2. Fastball inside corner, rung him up. Got him looking and not an easy guy to strike out. No kidding. Just his fourth K. In his last 39 at bats. Well, there's the uh, base hit up the middle to drive in, too, that made it a 3 nothing ball game, and then he really settled in. Our AT&T high-speed replay he was terrific after that first inning, allowing six hits after the first, but none of those runners 
able to get home. Machado three for three tonight. A couple of singles, the double high off the wall was thrown out at third base in his last at bat. Threw it right by him. Good elevated fastball. But with a guy like Machado, there's a very fine line between an elevated fastball that's by him and one that's up there in the cheap seats. Well, he's having a very good year. Breaking ball in the dirt. You know, when it comes down to it, we talk about it every time you play a different series. There's certain guys you don't want to beat you. He's the one in Baltimore right now because he's hitting third. He's having that kind of year. He was a player of the month in April. You got you pitch around him and you got to go make your pitches to some big power hitters but they're, they're swing and miss guys. This guy's hitting for average for power and he's doing it all. Reached for it pulled it foul. Seem to get him to uh, bite on that breaking ball, though. Well, when Zach throws that pitch, he's not going to throw it to where he can hang it. So he's going to do anything to try and bounce it, and uh, you know he's not chasing it. Not good enough for him. To left. That's what he's looking and for. Indeed. And off the wall. Just above Ramirez, who's going to make a good strong throw to second base. And he beats the tag for a one out double. If that throw would have been a little more online, he'd have been a dead duck at second base. Well, I'll tell you what, Machado, he's been swinging it today. Starts with a single. It's another one and then a opposite field line drive off the wall comes back in he's thrown out at third and now a double off the left field wall tried to throw that heater by him in and he turned on it. Ramirez went back and it hits right there on that auxiliary scoreboard and comes out and uh, uh, Jose played it well but a little offline as Kipnis comes into the tag made it very close. So four for four today for Machado and they have their runner in scoring position. And Chris Davis 0 for 2 with a walk. Not including tonight. Chris Davis in his last 12 games. Has two runs batted in and has stranded 21 base runners. Now, granted, you're not going to drive him in every single time right. you come to the plate, but when you hit in the middle of the order, that's your job to be a run producer, and he has 27 RBIs, but I wish you would have told me that in between innings. That's sad. <laughs> it's fun. Well, because you just never know. You're he's he's hot and cold. When he gets hot, it's like you can't get him out. Swing and a miss. It's two and two. He stranded a couple of runners in the second inning when he struck out.
Machado at second with one away. And McAllister's 2 2 pitch. Clobbered right center field in the alley. And that's going to bring home the go ahead run as Davis grows in the second base with an RBI double. Yeah, on a 2 2 count. And McAllister, uh, this was a fastball. It had uh, plenty of plate. It looked like it was uh, right down the middle, and Davis took advantage of it. He likes the ball down a little bit as a typical left handed hitter. They wanted away, but it didn't get there. It stayed middle of the plate, and he plugs a gap in right center field, and it drives home Machado. So back to back doubles, and Baltimore will retake the lead. Mark Trumbo struck out in the first, singled in the third, walked in the fifth. Then sure. He shoots one to right. Deep. Chisenhall into the corner, and it's gone. And Mark Trumbo launches a two run homer. It's a three run seventh for Baltimore, and they now lead it six to three. For Trumbo, his 15th home run of the year. Depending on what Todd Frazier does tonight, that could give him the outright lead in the American League. Well, we told you, Trumbo, he's got that kind of power from the right side of the dish. This is right down the line, and you see this one leaks in, and it's too much of the plate. Middle calves, and it's going out. Chisinau's not going to get there. He gets over the fence, and it's a quick three runs for Baltimore. That was big, that big part of the lineup in there. We we mentioned it early in the game. Boy, they can do it. They can score quickly. When Baltimore wins games, it's usually because Chris Davis has a hand in it, and he got the game breaker with the RBI double. And now Trumbo delivers. You know, he's a guy that's that's his fourth home run and 13 RBIs in 17 games and in the against the AL Central this year. Well, this is a guy. Well, that's one reason why they're playing so well against the Central is because they're getting some hitting. Yeah. And that might be just pure coincidence. Not like Trumbo played in the division or knows the division that right. well. Right. But no, that's that's He's true. Cleaning up against it. Breaking ball in for a strike. Well, every pitch that he was beat on in the inning is, was a fastball, and it, it had too much of the plate. Now that breaking ball is in for strikes. You got to throw those to the big boys. In the air, deep center field, back is Rajay, and Davis pulls it down two away. Make a difference this summer and bike to cure in Velisano taking place July 29th through the 31st. Every dollar raised advances cancer research at Cleveland Clinic. Team up and get involved at Velisano.org. Jonathan Scope, two out of three, two singles, two runs driven in. And then he pulls that foul. Two and one. 
There's a 2 1. And that's hit in the air to center field. Rajay Davis again will make the play, and that will end the inning. But Baltimore busts it open here in the seventh. Machado, Davis, and Trumbo. And it's 6 3 Baltimore. PGA Pro Jimmy Hanlon has tips for your game and talks about the PGA tournament action inside the golf zone with Jimmy Hanlon presented by American Eagle Mortgage and Varmint Guard Sundays at 8 on Fox Sports Ohio. Brad Brock is into the ball game now for Baltimore third pitcher of the night. He's got the bottom part of the lineup. 8 9 and then the leadoff man Carlos Santana. Joey Rickard has come into the ball game for Young Su Kim in uh, left field. And now uh, Chris Jimenez who walked and scored in the fifth. Well, this is a Baltimore bullpen that they rank second in the American League. Fourth overall with a 2.54 ERA. It always seems like Baltimore always finds a way that they have a solid bullpen. Low and away, one ball, one strike. You know, and, and to get back into a game when you're down three and you're late in the ball game, you always like to get maybe a guy or two on hit home runs. The Orioles have given up the fewest at 38 homers. And you know, their ballpark's pretty pretty nice to hit in, as we mentioned earlier. But they're pitching 38 homers allowed, excuse me, 30, 39 after Napoli's today. the wall and Jimenez heading for second here's the throw and he is safe ball came loose otherwise he might have been out but scope couldn't handle the short hop throw Jimenez with a leadoff double and that's exactly what the Indians needed you know I, I, what a nice throw that was Jimenez he was off and running as soon as he hit the ball that was a slider he left up and watch record just coming into the game bare hands it comes up and fires a seed let's see if it's a tough hop yeah, it's sort of an in-between hop where Scope tried to grab it. He knew it was getting close and hit the uh, the heel of the glove. Never got it into the webbing, but if he holds on to it, pretty good chance that they have him. So it goes as a double. 
And now Rajay Davis will try to keep the momentum going for the Indians. Rajay with an infield single his last time up, one for two on the night. And caught in between takes a strike. Bad roller to short. Machado spins and throws, and it's on the money. One away. Well, kids, fun day is Sunday, and kids will be able to have the opportunity to run the bases after the ball game thanks to Cleveland Clinic's Children's. Visit uh, Indians.com for all the details. You know, we had John McDonald on with us earlier, and he really made a point about that play right there that I hadn't thought a lot about. But as a shortstop, or for any infielder that is, when you go up the middle or in the hole and you're on the outfield grass and you have to spin around and make that throw, if you haven't practiced it, if you haven't done it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, you come up to make that throw and it looks like a little dot you're trying to throw the ball perfectly to. But when you've practiced it and you've made that play so many times, you're just you're, the confidence is that you're throwing it to an area and you're trusting your first baseman so that you're not trying to make a perfect throw because that's usually when you make mistakes, isn't it? Well, and you slow it down. You don't speed it up. You know, it's uh, yeah. Sometimes you, when you think, okay, this guy's got a chance to beat it out, or the game speeds up on you, you really rush it. But you stay composed, you stay relaxed, and you, you do it. Something you want to tell me about? It's a Rick Man and Toga party. Wow, well, well, whoever made that sign drank all those beers. Carlos Santana, 0 for 2 on the night, pitches up and away. How do we take that shot for like two seconds and then go away? I don't know, but where was that? Located. That had to be out in the, the corner. That figures. So some old fans back in the 70s from the uh, Rick's Rejects. Oh, I see him now. Do you? Yeah, because that that tower of Miller light cans <laughs> is about four that. and a half feet high. You're right inside the. Uh, well, from five to seven, those were only two dollars. <laughs> so I think that's when they drank them. That's down the right field line. That is out. That's impressive. Santana down swinging. Not so much. Two down. Check the sinker from Brock. He goes down. Very good movement. Santana swings over the top of it. They get out number two after the leadoff double. Jason Kipnis, one out of three on the night, trying to deliver here. Looks at a strike to even the count. have lately done a great job with two outs runners in scoring position they've scored a two out run in 13 of their last 15 games but tonight the two out hitting magic has not been there well no time like the present just takes one that's why I always say if you can get one Early in a game, you know, it seems like everybody else loosens up, you know? 
And it seems like the pressure's off, but as the game goes on, it gets tougher and tougher to get that hit with two outs. Down and in, he strikes him out to end the inning. So, we've played seven in Cleveland, and Baltimore now has the upper hand, six to three. Presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. It's a 6 3 Baltimore lead. And here in the eighth inning, Jeff Manship will come on for Cleveland. He'll be facing Ryan Flaherty, Caleb Joseph, and Adam Jones. Manship's 17th appearance on the year. Those three runs for Baltimore in the seventh inning kind of tell the story of what they've been able to do this year in close games late. When they are tied after six, Baltimore is five and one, while the Indians are just three yeah. and four. Well, the Indians had issues uh, late in ball games uh, when they started this year out, and it's you know there there have been games though this year that I think in the past they would have lost, they were able to hang on and win too on the other side. So hopefully that continues to get better as the season goes on. But that that's where. What seventh inning on is that bullpen's got to come in and do it, and that's where yeah. they struggled early. Yep. And tonight here, you get in here, seventh inning. What happens? Zach McAllister came in and gave up three runs. So, I mean, it's going to happen, and everybody does it. But that's how you win late. And Rajay Davis goes back and makes a nice play on a ball hit hard by Ryan Flaherty, but nothing to show for it, and he's 0 for 4 tonight. Go down to Andre Knott. Well, yesterday was an off day for the Indians, but not an off day for shortstop Francisco Lindor. He went over to the historic League Park yesterday and worked out with some kids. This is the second time he's been able to do this. He will do this throughout the year. First time he could do it outside, and he worked at only the fundamental places with the kids. Told me he had a great time. He said some of the kids even told him to take a picture and put it on their Instagram. He said, you're old enough to have Instagram? <laughs> but he had a great time in doing it. Well, Aribe takes care of Caleb Joseph, two away. You know, Andre, I wonder if if anyone from the organization had enough time to sort of walk Lindor through the history of League Park and just what that piece of it's, property means to this franchise. It's a great question. I didn't get to get fully finish that conversation with him because he had to go hit during batting practice. But he did say to me, he goes, that park is unbelievable. And I go, do you know who all played there? Yeah. <laughs> he kind of looked at me. And he goes, well, to he goes, you got to tell me later. But he did enjoy going there. And, he, and it was a great time. And he's going to do more of these on the road and a couple more back here in Cleveland as well. I mean, that that's a that's a link to the absolute greats of all time in baseball. Babe no Ruth, Chris Speaker, you name it. I mean, they all played there. 
Yes, indeed. Cy you could, Young. I mean, you could, you, the list goes on. You, you start naming people, and you get, it's crazy. They never started playing at Old Municipal Stadium until what? Uh, the, on weekends at first. Yeah. You know, for bigger crowds and lights, and it was. Uh, I'm not sure the the, the really first wasn't year until it started. the 50s until they went over there full time, right? Not quite sure, but it was a while. League Park was there for quite some time, and still a special place. You're right. When you look at the history of the game, I'm not sure exactly when they they moved there full time. I just know that you know, the first time I went there, it's night and day from what it looks like now. And that's going to be a base hit on the left field for Adam Jones. Two out single to keep the inning alive. I mean, they've got the nice turf now. It's really great for kids. It's a it's a usable community park now. I mean, at one time it was still an old sort of dilapidated ball field. Right. Know, Instead of getting rid of it, they they some of the bleachers were falling down and yeah, yeah. One, one real great. But now they've done a nice job. They've preserved the heritage of of the land space, what it was, what it meant. But they've updated it so that it, it can be used. This is Joey Rickard, his first at bat of the night. to Jason Kipnis will end the inning. We'll go to the last half of the eighth with Baltimore in front, six to three. in right field or the new drink rails in left with the district ticket presented by Sports Time Ohio. District tickets are only $13 and it includes your first drink. They are available online. Go to Indians.com slash district ticket. The people having fun out at the ballpark Friday night. Nice way to start this Memorial Day weekend. The only bad thing right now is a score at six to three. Baltimore leads the Indians and Buck Showalter back to his bullpen as he's got Darren O'Day is coming on and this is the, the tough right hander for the 20th time you can see his records two and one an ERA of 260 struck out 21 in the 17 in the third innings he's on to face Lindor Napoli Ramirez. O'Day first batter faced uh, has retired 13 of the first 19 he has faced. Now you're down to outs. Indians left with six remaining. Francisco Lindor drove in a run his last time to the plate with a sack fly in the fifth. That tied the game at three. 
But since then, Baltimore put three on the board in the seventh. And the Indians have yet to answer. Well, this is a guy that Buck Showalter leaned on heavily last year, and you can see why. 68 games he appeared in, he had 82 strikeouts. Third in innings pitch, 65 and a third last year. Just tough, just a different arm angle. Funky delivery. Ned Yost, the Royals manager, who was the All Star skipper for the American League last year, that made Darren O'Day an All Star. It was his choice. He'd be a guy, as you're going around picking, filling out your bullpen, he'd be a pretty good guy to have in there because he's tough, he's different, gives you different yeah, look. Yeah, that, that's the thing. It gives you a different look. And you, you watch and he comes down, he start that, that front side he goes down, but then he comes up and can throw it. So it, it is, it's very strange. It may be tough to pick it up. He can get it by you upstairs. He's got that sinker to run it down and away. Makes it tough run left yeah, that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when a right-hander throws sidearm, you can get left-handers out. That's what Quisenberry used to do a long time ago. That's the pitch. Boy, that's awfully tough. And if you don't face the guy a lot, you don't have a book on him, it's easy for him. You, you watch. He goes down and then brings it back up. And boy, that just misses on the outside edge a little low. He got up a little bit. Frankie kept his hands back. Well, there's one way get a quick one swing and get a run back here. Now they're only down two. Makes it six to four. Darren O'Day gives up just his fourth home run on the year. But I guess four, four home runs in just over 17 innings of work is quite a few. Yeah, it is. But there's a pitch that stayed up. He didn't get that one down where that where he missed with it. Frankie had a good look at him. That was a a great take when he didn't swing at that other one so that forced O'Day to bring it up and you see what happened the hitter made him elevate the baseball and Frankie got him. So it's a 6 4 game now. The second home run of the game for the Indians but both of them have been solo shots. Napoli with that solo blast back in the fourth. And that's outside 2 and 0. Oh. In there for a strike, it's two and one. Just a bit outside, good eye here by Napoli. Patient approach. And it's three and one. Well, right now Mike just wants to really zero in. And if it's not his pitch to hit, just take it. You need a base runner. The walk's as good as a hit right here. Get that tying run to the plate if you can get on.
Okay. He won. That's the second time he's thrown him a slider right on the outside edge. He's going to have to come back and throw another one now. Different location. He didn't go back outside with this breaking ball. He stayed down in the end, and it might have been off the plate, and Mike helped him out. But, you know, it's too close to take. Too close to take, so you just try to stay alive, and he fouled it off, but he'll live for another pitch. Payoff to Napoli. Just pop back out there of play. You go. Follow him off. Follow him off. This is uh, Napoli's fourth at bat. And he's already seen 26 pitches. Somebody must have told Todd Frazier that Mark Trumbo hit a home run tonight. Why did he get one? He hit a solo shot after Melky Cabrera hit a grand slam. Part of a five run sixth inning for Chicago. They lead the Royals 5 2. Up and away ball for Good at bat. Draws the walk. Got the fastball. It was off the plate. So nice walk. Well, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light and Jose Ramirez with three hits on the night. That was a beautiful swing. Double to left center. And he smacks one right back up the middle. And then he takes the pitch low and away and punches it to left field. Looking for a four hit game. And he ropes one on the right field line. It's a fair ball into the corner. On his way to third is Napoli. He'll stop there. And the Indians will bring. The go ahead run to the plate. How oh, about that, boy? Three straight. A four hit night for Jose Ramirez, his second double in the ball game. I think this ball caught chalk. If not, it was awfully close, man. He roped that double right down the line into the corner. I mean, he stayed up, and there was a slider that was sort of flat. Ramirez stayed back, hit it nicely. Watch, it gets close to chalk. Right there inside the line into the corner. His second double tonight. They have four. And now the tying runs are out on the bases with nobody out. A career high four hit game for Jose Ramirez, who represents the tying run now with Juan Arebe at the plate. And Arebe smoked one to deep right his last time up. This is a guy you better not be too aggressive with. He's going to have to dial it down a little bit. Napoli put up a good at bat to get the walk, but he had to foul a couple pitches off. And he shoots that one foul right side. Okay, now Juan's got his work cut out. Down 0 2. And right here, O'Day's going to try and get him to expand. He, he's looking for a strikeout. Right hander Michael Gibbons has just started to throw in the Baltimore bullpen. 0 2 on a rebate. And that's outside. Yeah, he's not going to be close. He's going to see if he can get your rebate to chase. Michael Gibbons. And right now, this ball game still up for grabs. Indians trail it by two. 
But a rebate, the go ahead run at the plate. Tied him up. Good pitch. And he strikes him out. One away. Well, there's the strikeout he was looking for. Went so far away on the 0-2 uh, pitch. Then he just gets under one and throws it up and in. And Rebe just trying to protect to get that guy in. Took an emergency hack and goes down swinging. So he gets the first out of the inning. Chisnell likes to well it's not going to matter because they're going to put him on. They'll go for the intentional pass here. Double play in order. And you've got Jimenez on deck. Uh, you know so you're going for a double play ball. That's the second walk in the inning. For O'Day. Pass sends Chisinau to first, and now Chris Jimenez, who doubled to left field his last time up. <laughs> There's Mike Napoli. Jose Ramirez the tying run. And Lonnie Chisinau is the go ahead run. We're in the bottom of the eighth. And given the situation. This could be the ball game. We got a golden opportunity right here. And a first pitch strike. Has four hits in his last ten at bats. Well, he'd love to get one more run home at least, just to see. Bases loaded, nobody out. Yeah, after they already had one in, you, you got to get two in the inning. Yeah, O'Day's a guy that's decept deceptive. He tries to get ahead of you and then get you to swing at his pitch. He doesn't want to throw a strike and he won't until he, he has to. So right now he's just going to stay out there and expand that zone. And he's going to try and keep him stranded. Got a foul right back. Man, got away with one there. He wanted that slider away. Joseph wanted it off the plate. And if you watch, it stays and it had a pretty good chunk of the plate. But you know, when you're protecting up there with two strikes, you just want to make sure you see it before you yeah. get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're in a defensive mode. Right. And, and that's why it's so important for pitchers to pitch ahead in the count because of that situation. You don't want to get out too early. Then you can get away with a couple pitches like that when you're ahead in the count. Base is loaded, one out. And a one two pitch. And a one up smash to second. Scope goes to the bag for one back to first. And inning ending double play. Baltimore gets out of a huge jam as they turn two to end the inning. The Lindor Homer gets the Indians a run closer, but they still trail it six to four as we go to the ninth.
Battling back all night, almost had a chance there in the eighth inning to tie it or take the lead, but couldn't get it done. Welcome back to the corner along with Jensen Lewis, Al Pulaski. Boy, Jensen, though, the bullpen tonight, not as reliable as it has been of late. I'll give a lot of credit to Trevor Bauer for what he did after the first inning, but you look at the numbers, the Indians have been out, outscored in the seventh inning more than any other inning. 21 to 13, a lot of that has fallen on Zach McAllister. Again, another close, late situation that he's fallen short. All right, Indians and Orioles, one more inning to go here as we send it back upstairs to Matt Underwood and Rick Manning. A reminder to join us for Indians Live following the game, brought to you by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Al, Al, you'll be happy to know, I, I just talked with the airline. They said they, they <laughs> put your luggage on a, on a Great Lakes freighter. It should be here sometime next week. Okay, I'll head to the pier next week and grab it. <laughs> Al and uh, Jensen had quite the travel experience Who's coming home from it in? Chicago. Gordon Lightfoot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my. Here's Dan Otero. He's got Manny Machado, Chris Davis, and Mark Trumbo. Who... Uh, those three men are the difference in the game. Yes, they are. Machado broke his bat. Well, they'll finally get him out tonight. One away. And he's he's been aggressive. Machado yeah, his first he, yes, three times has. up. He saw three pitches yeah. and had three knocks. Yeah, they they've all been pretty aggressive tonight when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, early, early you pointed that out. Early yeah, in that first inning, they were getting after yes, Bauer they were. in the count. They sure were. Again, whether that was by design, whether that was sleep deprivation, we're not sure, but it worked to their advantage. Five at bats, officially ten pitches total for Machado. Four times, swung the first pitch and put it in play. Chris Davis had a big hit in that seventh inning that broke the 3 3 tie, doubling in a run, and then Mark Trumbo with an op. You don't see a lot of opposite field home runs into that right field corner. Well, I mean, he hit it high enough and it was slicing and it went to the right spot. Yeah. Just got over the fence out there, but still. It's a warm night, too. Ball's carrying yeah, a little bit. The location of the three pitches that were hit were not very good. Rare too, and that it, it's it's warm end of May, and there's no breeze either. It's it's beautiful. It's this is perfect. what we've been waiting for. Now they said it was 72 at game time, and now it's up to 77. Well, the scoreboard took a while to get warmed up. <laughs> it was 34 when the game started. <laughs> Game tomorrow as Danny Salazar goes for Cleveland and Ubaldo Jimenez will go for the Birds. Coverage begins at 3.30 with Indians Live. Alan Jensen will preview the matchup. He strikes him out. Good change of pace by Otero. And there are two down in the ninth. Well, here is our Pat O'Brien play of the game because it's the reason the Orioles are up by two. Yeah, good power. He sliced it the other way, but you can see the location of the pitch. The fan caught the baseball, upsetting for Zach McAllister because that was the third consecutive hit and third consecutive extra base hit. And that. Is, is the big inning that uh, Baltimore needed for a team that really struggled in Houston they have 13 hits on the board tonight well and they started you know it got what five six times tonight so he used the boxing analogy they came out jabbing it was all singles and then they landed a couple of haymakers in the seventh last chance for the Indians when we come back
to the game brought to you by Mazda. One of the keys was contain the power. And the middle guys, they got loose tonight a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they did. Well, I mean, that's what their job is. Their job is to do some damage, and they did tonight. Offensively, Indians, uh, they, you know, they did a nice job. They, hey. they knocked the starter out in the fifth inning. They did exactly what you had to do. You fall behind 3 0 in the first inning. They come back, they battle back to tie the game. And then right after they tied, they give back three. They had a nice chance last yeah. inning. They could only get one. You know, and unfortunately, it was a ball hit on the nose, a double play to get out of that inning. Now you're going to have to try and do it against their closer, which is not an easy task. Zach Britton is the Baltimore closer. He's a left hander. He was uh, on for the 20th time this year. Two wins, a loss in the area, 142. He's 12. For 12, save situation. And I mean, this this is a guy, and you can see the do, the do ups here: Davis, Santana, and some Kipnis. Success so, there. Well, yeah, that's you get a man aboard, and you have an opportunity. This guy throws a hard little sinker, sinker slider guy for a left hander, but he gets it up there with some velocity, though. Not your average lefty coming in, but he's he's tough. First pitch <laughs> right down Broadway at 90. 90 sets an yeah, easy right. 97, wasn't it? Exactly. Well, and you're usually trying to take one just to get an idea. You know, you've got an idea now. Downstairs with that fastball. Well, maybe we'll have some dramatics like they had tonight in New York, where in the bottom of the ninth, Curtis Granderson sent the Mets to a win over the Dodgers six to five snapping LA's four game win streak. Hey, the Indians this year when they score four runs are twenty two and three. They have four runs and they have ten hits. And usually when they get their ten hits or more they're thirteen and three. So you know they, it's been a strange game because the, the bullpen gave it up later. But that's going to happen. They will continue to fight. Chopped to short. And Machado guns it over. Davis is out number one. Top of the order and Carlos Santana. Need a base runner to get that tying run to the dish. And Santana tonight 0 for 3 with a walk. Side corner with that heater, and he gets ahead of Santana. Baltimore looking to stop a four game losing streak. The Indians came in having won three in a row, and Santana way out around that pitch, and it's 0 and 2. Yeah, the harder you swing on this guy, the better he likes it because he's getting it up there. I mean, and he's out on three pitches, two away. That'll bring up Jason Kipnis. Try to keep the Indians' hopes alive. He's one for four. A strange night for Jason in that he has the hit that came in the third inning. His other three times up, all strikeouts. And a ground ball to second. Scope from the outfield grass throws him out, and the Indians go one, two, three. And Baltimore ends their three game win streak as they drop the tribe tonight by a final score of six to four. Baltimore ends their four game losing streak as they go to twenty seven and nineteen. The Indians are twenty five and twenty one winning pitcher Dylan Bundy. He's one and one The save to Zach Britton his thirteenth. The loser is Zach McAllister. He's now two and two on the year. So the Indians fell behind three to nothing in the first. They came back to tie it. But uh, a bad seventh inning led to their demise tonight. They had a shot in the eighth. 
They yeah. Home run. Hey. They loaded the bases, but it just didn't happen. The, the opportunity was there. After falling behind, they battled back, and, and, and even though that three runs was put on the board in the seventh, they had the opportunity. So you can't be disappointed there. They scored their four runs. They had their ten hits. You know, you end up losing. That's okay. The Orioles are a good team, and they're going to come back tomorrow and try and win the, the middle game of the set. So that's going to wrap things up from Progressive Field tonight as Baltimore takes the series opener 6 to 4. For Rick Manning and Andre Nutt, I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow at 4. Stay tuned for Indians Live with Alan Jensen coming up next.